What is up guys, it's your boy Swallam here, back with another Turtle Wow video. For those of you who don't know what Turtle Wow is, I've made a full 12 minute vid video covering most of the notable changes on Turtle Wow, but a quick summary would be Vanilla Wow with additional custom content, such as brand new quests, brand new zones, new dungeons, and new raids. You also have some class changes compared to their original vanilla versions, which we will talk about today. This video will be based on you knowing how the classes work in vanilla, and I will only be showing you what is different in Turtle WoW, that way we can pack as much information into this video as possible. The class changes made on Turtle WoW is made to make every class more viable both in dungeons, PvP and raids, and it also helps make more classes more fun to play by giving them access to more of their abilities at earlier levels. You can also skip to whatever class you want to see the changes for by checking out the timeline of the video as it should be divided into class sections for easy access to whatever class you want to play. Either way, let's have a look at them. So first up we have Druids. Druids have had some changes to baseline spells, so first of all we have Claw, which now deals 100% of weapon damage in addition to the current damage it deals. You also have Frenzied Regeneration, which now also heals for 1% of your stamina. You also have Insect Swarm, which is now a balanced spell and available to all Druids, starting already at level 20. You also have Fairy Fire, the Feral version, which is now available to all Druids, starting at level 30. Going further down, we have new abilities. We have the Olkin Frenzy, hopefully I said that one right. Attacks done to you while in Moonkin form have a 15% chance to cause you to go into a Frenzy, causing you to be immune to pushback while casting balanced spells, and this effect lasts for 10 seconds. Next up we have something called Savage Bite, learnable at level 58, requires bear form, costs 30 range, and has a 6 second cooldown. This is just literally a regular bite attack, and it's for bear form. We also have some talent changes we were worth taking a look at. First of all we have natural weapons. This one is now 3 ranks down from 5, so this is just a change. You will see a star next to the new talents as well, because we do have some new talents. But this one you will see a lot of the old 5 star or 5 ranks down to 3 now, which gives you a lot more freedom to play around with talents, and it gives you more talent points to spend basically. So that's the first one, you also have Improved Wrath, which reduces the cast time, but also reduces the global cooldown of your Wrath ability, and the amount it reduces it by is coherent to how many ranks you have. You also have Moonkin Form, which has been reworked slightly, and you have Omen of Clarity, which also has been reworked slightly. Next up for Feral, you have Primal Fury and Blood Fantasy, which has just uh, been a slight rework once again. You have Feral Instinct, slight rework, and also down from 5 ranks to 3 ranks, giving you 2 talent points that you can spend anywhere else, which you can for example spend on their new talent point called Blood Frenzy. So this one down here, Blood Frenzy, increases the duration of Tiger's Fury by 3 or 6 seconds, and your Enrage now also instantly restores 5 or 10 Rage. In addition, Tiger's Fury and uh, Enrage increases your attack speed by 6 or 12% for 6 or 12 seconds. Now those numbers are based on rank 1 and rank 2, so obviously rank 2 gives you a higher uh, increase and for a higher duration. Next up we have a brand new talent called Reese Berserk once again, removes all fear effects and increases your energy regen rate by 100% while in cat form, and increases your total health by 20% while in bear form. After the effect ends, the health is lost, and this effect lasts for 20 seconds. For restoration, we don't really we have one new talent, but we also have, for example, Swiftment. This one has been moved from row 7 to row 3, which once again it, it like it replaces the insects form as it says right here, but it gives you access to more of your abilities at earlier levels. Instead of having to wait 20 more levels, it is now accessible super early. I think this would be accessible at level 20 something, right? Yeah. They have also removed Tranquil Spirit as a prerequisite for the row 7 major talent. They have improved Rejuve, which has also been removed or is now a prerequisite talent for improved regrowth. They have improved Enrage, has been removed from the restoration tree, and has been integrated into the new talent Blood Fury. Good change right there, you have Subtlety. Now also reduces threat regen from balanced spells, and reduces the threat generated by your healing and balanced spells by those numbers equivalent to how many ranks you have in that talent. 
Next up, we have talent. Uh, we have what did I say? Talent tree of life form. Shape shift into the tree of life. While in this form, you increase your healing received by twenty percent of your total spirit for all party members within thirty yards. Yards. Your movement speed is reduced by twenty percent, and you cannot cast damaging spells or healing touch. But the mana cost of these spells is reduced by twenty percent. The act of shape shifting frees the other caster of polymorph and movement impairing effects. Having access to that tree of life form definitely makes restoration druids a lot more viable this time around than they were in the OG version of Classic WoW. The next class on this list is the Hunter. So Hunter is probably the class with the least amount of changes on Turtle WoW. So first of all, new abilities. We have something called True Shot, a precise shot with a ranged weapon that strikes the target for X additional damage, and the cooldown of this ability is equal to the attack speed of your ranged weapon. So you can see the ranks right here, they're dealing additional damage, and uh, the percentage of the mana that they take. For avoidance, there's a new pet passive, reducing the damage your pet takes from area of effect attacks by an additional 50%. Now, for talent changes, we have a couple for Beast Mastery and Survival. So Beast Mastery first, Improved Eye of the Beast, increases the duration of Eyes of the Beast by 30 or 60 seconds, and while challenge ch ch channeling, channeling this ability, your tamed pet deals 15 to 30 percent additional damage and increases its focus generation by 15 to 30 percent. So this could really offer some additional really interesting gameplay for Beastmaster Hunters right here. You also have Improved Aspect of the Hawk, which has now been renamed to Improved Predator Aspect and now gives your melee attacks a 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 percent chance to increase melee attack speed by 30 percent for 12 seconds while Aspect of the Wolf is active. For survival, you have a new talent called Superior Strikes, which reduces the cooldown of your Raptor Strike and Mongoose Bite by equivalent amounts of the ranks you have. Next up, Monster Slaying and Humanoid Slaying have been combined into one talent called Improved Slaying, which gives the damage and critical damage bonuses of both talents. Next up we have the class changes for the mage, and mages only get a couple new things, so let's talk about the new ability. We have refreshment table, which you know what this is, it's the refreshment table, so no need to talk too much about that one. Changes for the baseline spells, so arcane missiles, have now have their spell power scaling coefficient increased ever so slightly. And for talent changes, we only really have a couple of them for arcane, so improved arcane explosion has now been changed to arcane impact, which increases the critical strike chance of your arcane explosion and your arcane missile spells by an additional 2, 4 and 6%. You also have two new talents, number one is the Billion's Aura, which gives mana regen to all party members equal to 15% of the mage's mana regen within 30 yards. So basically, the more mana regen you have, the more mana your party will regen as well, which is actually quite cool. This lasts for 30 minutes, requires arcane potency as a prerequisite talent, and castle can be cast while riding on a mount, just like how the Archmage did in Warcraft 3. Next up we have Arcane Potency, which is the prerequisite talent for Brilliance Aura. This one increases the critical strike damage bonus of your Arcane spells by 18, 36 and 50%. That is a massive amount, and this requires Arcane Mind as a prerequisite talent, so they have massively buffed Arcane this time around, which I personally think is about time. Now this next one is going to be a huge one, we have the Paladin. I'm playing a Paladin myself and you definitely notice there's been a couple changes this time around. Uh, probably more of them if you're playing Holy than if you're playing uh, Retribution like I am, but let's talk about it. So first of all, we have a couple changes to baseline spells, so Consecration is no longer a talent, and is available to all Paladins starting at level 20, and its scaling has been increased ever so slightly, well it's more than doubled, almost tripled, and mana cost for all ranks has been reduced, and you have an example right here. For Judgment of Righteousness, the scaling coefficient has been increased over here as well, and it's basically roughly about a 45% increase. For Retribution Paladin, the scaling coefficient has been added, so we get a 0.03 scaling coefficient, and Holy Strike cooldown has been increased from 8 to 10 seconds. So there we go. For new abilities, we have one, and that is Crusader Strike. This one is pretty massive, and it's available super early. I believe you get this one at level 8 if you're playing Retribution, or any Paladin for that matter. 
This is a strike that causes X damage and increases the holy damage taken by the target by up to Y per a crusader strike and this can be stacked up to 5 times and last for 30 seconds. So here you can see their ranks, their, their mana usage, their pure damage and how much bonus holy damage they add per stack. So if you have a rank 5 for example you can stack this 5 times increasing holy damage taken by 150. So there we go, now we have talent changes, first of all we can talk about holy, for healing light, this one increases the amount healed by your holy light, flash of light, and the effectiveness of holy shock spells by 4, 8 and 12%, so probably 3 ranks, there we go. This is a brand new talent by the way, like when you see a star, that's usually a brand new talent. So here we go, holy shock, this is a rework in this time around, and the values are for rank 3. The cooldown have been reduced from 30 seconds to 20 seconds, mana cost increased from 325, you can see the values right here, and the healing and damage has also been, like, increased by a lot. A little bit more on the healing side than the damage side, but definitely making Shokudin even better, and making Holy Paladins even better as well. Now for lasting judgments, this one has been removed. Next up we have some talent changes to protection, and protection paladins are really shining in Turtle WoW, they're super super great, and even if you're leveling, you definitely, you feel, you feel unstoppable. You have Redoubt for example, now Redoubt has a 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10% chance to activate off of any direct attack instead of being the victim of a critical strike, so now it can proc off of any attack, literally anything. Precision increases your chance to hit with all melee weapons and spells by 1, 2 and 3 percent this is actually something that even holy paladins and retribution paladins go for as well next up you have the blessing of kings talent has been moved from the row three of the protection talent tree to row three of the retribution talent tree so now if you're playing a retribution paladin you usually get blessing of kings instead of getting it as a protection Shield specialization increases the amount of damage absorbed by your shield by 10, 20 and 30% and has a 33, 66 or 100% chance to restore 2% mana when a block occurs. So you block even more damage and you get mana back, definitely a good deal. Improved Consecration Aura has been moved from row 4 of the Protection Talent to row 5 of the Holy Talent Tree. Definitely a good change right there, don't really think Protection Paladins use that one too much. Improved Seal of Justice increases the chance of your Seal of Justice to stun the target by 22, 33 or 67% and your Judgment of Justice has a 33, 66 and 100% chance to taunt your target to attack you but has no effect if the target is already attacking you, so effectively giving you a taunt. Blessing of Sanctuary has been moved from row 5 to row 3 in the protection tree, once again referring back to something I talked about earlier in the video, giving you access to many of your core abilities earlier in your gameplay. Holy Shield talent has been moved from row, row 7 to row 5, referring back to that same argument, and you also have Ardent Defender, this is a brand new thing, so when you have less than 35% health, all the damage taken is reduced by 25%. For Retribution, the Seal of Command talent has been removed from row 3 to row 5, the Sanctity Aura talent has been moved from row 5 to row 3 of the Holy, Holy Tree this time around, so you no longer have the Sanctity Aura, kind of a sage. Uh, greater Blessing of Kings, mana cost has been adjusted to now going from 150 mana to 15% base mana. You also have Improved Seal of the Crusader has been renamed to Heart of the Crusader and now also increases the Holy Damage Bonus of Crusader Strike. We also have a brand new talent called Sanctified Command, which basically gives your Seal of Command a 45 or 90% chance to resist Dispel effect, and your Judgment of Command will restore mana equal to 10 or 20% of the base mana cost of the Seal of Command to you and your nearby party members. Definitely quite a few changes here for Paladins, no longer being a meme class in Vanilla WoW, on Turtle WoW at least, and definitely very needed. Makes the Paladin very fun to play, even as Retribution. You're no longer literally just an auto attack machine, you have a stackable holy damage increase, and then a huge holy strike to deal massive amounts of damage, and even at level 40 you can almost one shot your enemies, it is pretty insane. 
Next up, we have another huge class with a lot of changes, and that is the Priest. First of all, we can talk about the changes to baseline spells. So Holy Fire's additional damage component scaling has been adjusted from 0.75 to 0.857. Roughly a 20% increase there, if I do my math correctly, but yeah, you can see right there. Then you also have Divine Spirit is now baseline for all priests, starting at level 30. Lightwell has may been made baseline and is available for all priests, starting at level 40. Inner Fire now also gives attack power like in the beta versions, and Improved Inner Fire also scales this value. Fair Ward is now a disciplined spell and can be cast in shadow form, and you also have Feedback Mana Cost has been adjusted. Priests have also gained a couple new abilities, mostly for shadow. You have Improved Shadow Form which reduces the mana cost of your shadow spells by 15% while in shadow form. This is obviously a passive effect. You also have Pain Spike causing 225 shadow damage instantly, but the damage cost will begin healing itself over 5 seconds after landing. You also have Shadow Mend, which heals the friendly target for 518 to 615, and this spell generates a reduced threat, and it requires Shadow Form, so it gives you a way to heal in Shadow Form. You can also see both Pain Spike and Shadow, Me Shadow Mend are learned at level 60. For talent changes, let's cover Shadow first, so improves the Vampiric Touch, talent has been renamed as Vampiric Embrace, and increases the percentage healed by. A Vampiric Embrace, which is now a talent, but talent by an additional 5, talent by an additional 5 to 10%, and your Vampiric Embrace now causes all party members to also gain mana equal to 2-4% of any shadow spell damage that you deal. Next up for Holy, this is actually quite interesting, so first of all, Holy Nova, the talent damage component scaling has been adjust adjusted, increasing it by roughly 60%, which is pretty massive, and you have something brand new called a Holy Champion. This allows you to choose another player as your Holy Champion, granting you several unique abilities, and instead of reading all of them, you can basically increase their armor, you can reduce their damage taken, you can increase their healing done, and it basically gives you a way to buff literally anyone in your team. So you can pick your healer, you can pick a healer to be a champion, and that healer will now deal increased healing done. You can also pick a melee DPS or a caster DPS and increase their damage done as well. It's a pretty interesting spell, and uh, yeah, it's brand new. Next up you have one for Discipline, that is the Reflective Shield, which is also brand new, causing 20% of the damage absorbed by your Powerwood Shield to reflect back at the attacker, and this damage causes no threat whatsoever. Next up we have the Rogue, and one of these changes will be very important for the Hardcore community, which is one of their brand new abilities, the Flourish. This is a finishing move that increases your chance to parry by an, uh, by an additional 20%, and this lasts longer per combo point, so you can see the numbers right here, adding 1 second for every combo point. You also have Deadly Throw, which is a actual ability from later in the game's lifespan, which Turtle Wow has now taken and put into vanilla, which makes a lot of sense, and it's a finishing move that causes thrown weapon damage, plus additional damage per combo point. So let's say you build up some combo points, and one of your mobs start running away, you can now use Deadly Throw to finish them off. You also have something called Agitating Poison, Coat a weapon with poison that lasts for 30 minutes, and each strike has a 20% chance of poisoning the enemy, which instantly inf inflicts 67 to 85 nature damage, and causes additional threat, and it has a bunch of charges. For talent changes, we have a couple of them for combat and one for subtlety, so for combat we have Close Quarters Combat, which is a 5 rank, so you can see right here, Dagger Specialization and Fist Specialization. I can't speak today, can I? Dagger Specialization and Fist Weapon Specialization have been combined into Close Quarters Combat, increases your chance to get a critical strike with daggers and fist weapons by 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5%. Basically, 1% for every rank. You also have Throwing Weapon Specialization, which increases the range of your throwing weapons by 3 or 6 yards, so 3 yards per rank. For subtlety, you have Improved Sap, which gives you a 50-100% to 100 chance to return to stealth mode after using your sap ability. Now next up we have one of the more interesting classes here, so that's the Shaman. 
First of all, we have some changes to baseline spell. Stormstrike now has two ranks, and new rank two is now learnable at level 60. So first of all, you have the regular Stormstrike, and when you get max level, you learn a brand new rank. The cooldown is set to 12 seconds as opposed to the 20 seconds of rank 1, and it costs 12% of your base mana as opposed to 21% of your base mana with rank 1. So it increases your damage done, it is less lower cooldown and lower mana usage. Now one of the reasons why I said Shaman is one of the more interesting classes is that they have new Shaman racial spells. So for orcs you have Feral Spirit for example, summons two spirit wolves under the command of the Shaman for 20 seconds. For Tauren you have Spirit Link, links the spirit of an ally and the three closest allies within 15 yards together. When linked targets take damage, 15% is distributed among the other linked allies, this one also lasts for 20 seconds. For trolls you have Hex, and this one transforms the enemy into a frog that cannot cast and does 60% less damage for up to 5 seconds. This only works on beasts, humanoids and critters. So this is the first time I see this, it's new racials which is quite interesting to say the least. It also gives new abilities and it spreads them out across several different races. Next up they do have some new abilities as well, you have Calm Elements for example, calms the target reducing the range at which they will attack you by 10 yards, and this one only affects elemental targets, level 70 or lower, and it lasts for 15 seconds. You also have Water Shield, the caster is surrounded by 3 globes of water, when a spell, melee or range attack hits the caster, 83 mana is restored to the caster. This expends one water globe, and only one globe will activate every few seconds, it also lasts for, for 10 minutes. Only one elemental shield can be active on the shaman at any time. You also have earth shield, the caster is surrounded by an earthen shield, giving a 30% chance of ignoring spell interruption when damaged, and causing attacks to heal the shielded target by 150. This effect can only occur once every few seconds, it has 3 charges and lasts for 10 minutes. Once again, only one elemental shield can be active on the shaman at any time. You also have Totemic Recall, returns your totems to the earth, giving you 25% of the mana required to cast each totem destroyed by Totemic Recall. Now both Water Shield, Earth Shield and Totemic Recall, I believe we currently have in Wrath and maybe we had them in TBC as well. So these are basically futuristic abilities that have now been taken down into Vanilla WoW and it's quite interesting. For talent changes, there's a bunch of them for enhancement and only one for elemental, so let's go through enhancement first. Two-handed weapons we will be learned on character creation, instead of being acquired from row 3 on enhancement. The existing characters will already have this skill trained. Parry will now be learnable at level 6 from your class trainer. Instead of being acquired from row 5 of enhancement, you also have a brand new talent called Thunderhead. This one is a 1 rank uh, talent and allows your lightning shield to be cast on allies and reduces its mana cost by 20%. Also, Stormstrike talent has been moved from row 7 to row 5, referring to an earlier point I made in the video, where your core abilities are trained at an earlier level. You also have Bloodlust, this is a spell that we didn't really have I think, but we have Bloodlust now, increasing melee, ranged and spellcasting by 20%, for a party member within 30 yards, lasts for 15 seconds. Note this, it says for a party member, so that's quite interesting right there. We also have something brand new called Spirit Armor, increases the armor gained from shields by 10, 20 and 30%. Toughness and Anticipation have been combined into one talent, Ancestral Guidance. This one increases your armor value from items by up to 10% and chance to dodge by an additional up to 5%. So right here we are working a lot on two-handed enhancement weapons and also working on making, making shamans a tank again. I don't really know if anyone is using shamans as a tank, but hey, we, we can. And getting even more armor values, especially from shields, is going to be quite helpful, especially when leveling up. So for Elemental, we have Elemental Focus, after landing a critical strike with a Fire, Frost or Nature spell damage, you enter a clear casting state. The clear casting state reduces the mana cost of your next 2 damage spells by 40%. 
So now we only have two more classes to go, let's get right into the second to last one, the Warlock. For a Warlock we have one change to baseline spell, and that is the Torment of the Void Walker, which now deals a very small amount of shadow damage in addition to what it currently does, which is a Taunt. For new abilities we have Mana Funnel, which transfers mana from the caster to the p their pet every single second, basically the same as Health Funnel but this time with mana and it's very interesting. We also have Demon Portal, opens a portal into the Twisting Nether that summons a Felguard under the command of the caster for 5 minutes, pretty interesting right there, it summons a Felguard and is called the Demon Portal. We have Avoidance, which is a passive reducing the damage your pet takes from area of effect damage by 50%, and we also have the Soul Well Ritual, begins a ritual that summons a Soul Well and requires 3 players, and uh, once complete the players can use the Soul Well to acquire a Health Stone. If you played TBC for example, or Wrath, you probably know what this one is, but yeah, there we go. For talent changes we have one for Affliction, which is Soul Siphon, this is on the second row and has two ranks, the Soul Siphon talent has been combined from Improved Drain Life and Improved Drain Mana talent, and increases the health drained by your drain life by 5-10% and causes 15-30% of the mana drained by your drained mana spell to damage the opponent. For demonology we have improved enslaved demon, reduced the two ranks down from 5 and this one reduces the attack speed and casting speed penalty of your enslaved demon spell by 10 to 20% and reduces the resist chance by 20 to 10 to 20% and the casting time by 5 to 1 second. Well, I think it's 0.5 to 1 second. Also, Soul Link and Health Funnel will now work with enslaved demons, so you can have you can enslave a really powerful demon, then you can basically make it take less damage through Soul Link and heal it with Health Funnel, making demonology a very interesting spec right there. Master Conjurer has two ranks, it improved health stone, improved fire stone, and improved spell stone have all been combined into one talent called Master Conjurer. This one increases the amount of health restored by your health stone by 10 to 20%, and increases the bonuses and effects of your fire stones and spell stones by 15 to 30%. You also have something uh, the Inferno. The Inferno ability cooldown has now been reduced from one hour to 20 minutes, and can now be cast indoors. You have the Fell Intellect talent, which has now been reduced from five ranks down to three ranks, giving you two talent points that you can play around with, and this one increases the maximum mana of your Imp, Voidwalker, Succubus and Fellhound by 5, 10 and 15%. The Fell Stamina talent has been reduced from 5 ranks down to 3 ranks once again, increasing it gives you 2, it gives you two points to, to play around with, and this one, instead of the mana, it increases the health of your Imp, Voidwalker, Succubus and Fellhound. For Destruction we have the Intensity talent, gives you a 70% chance to resist interruption caused by damage while casting or channeling any destruction fire spell. You also have Pyroclasm, which gives your Reign of Fire, Hellfire, Conflagrate and Soul Fire spells a 25% chance to stun the target for 3 seconds. Next up, and the last class we're going to talk about today, is probably the most popular class in the Vanilla WoW universe, but I do think for Turtle WoW, Paladins are a little bit more popular based on the fact that they have been completely reworked and gotten a lot of class changes, but Warriors are really really interesting and they're a really good class to play. So first of all, we have some changes to the baseline spells and attacks of a warrior, well we have one, and that is the fact that Thunderclap can now be used in defensive stands. For new abilities, we have a couple abilities you might know about from uh, other expansions, like Intervene for example. This one requires defensive stands, costs 10 range, and has a half a minute cooldown. This one, using Intervene, you run at high speed towards a party member, intercepting the next melee or range attack made against them. So you also have something called Decisive Strike, I hopefully I said that one correctly. Focus and attack equal to slam rank 4 on an opponent, can be cast while moving, and will not suffer cast time pushback when taking damage. You also have a passive called Die by the Sword, increases your chance to parry attacks by 20% while under the effect of retaliation. For talent changes, for arms you have improved thunderclap, which reduces the cost of your thunderclap ability by 1, 2 and 4 rage points, and increases the damage done by 20, 40 and 60%. 
So remember, Thunderclap can now be used in defensive stance as well, but it's a talent change in arms. Next up, we have Pole Axe Specialization, so the talent has been combined from Pole Arm Specialization and the Axe Specializations, giving you both of those, uh, giving you both benefits from both of those into one specialization instead. You also have something called Improved Disciplines, which is a brand new talent. This one reduces the cooldown of your Retaliation, Recklessness, and Shield Wall abilities by 2, 4, and 6 minutes. Basically, 2 minutes per point spent into this talent. For protection, you have Improved Shield Block. This talent has been redu reduced from 3 ranks down to 1 rank, and it allows your Shield Block ability to block an additional attack, and decreases the duration by 1 second. So that was a long ass video talking about all of the class changes on Total Wow. Now all of these changes are available on their website and it definitely makes every class feel a little bit different while also keeping the vanilla feeling somewhat intact. It's not like it's gonna make or break any classes but it definitely improves their gameplay both at max level and definitely at lower levels. The fact is that most classes do get many of their core abilities really really early on which means it really makes for a much smoother leveling experience and it just gives you a much better first impression of your class while you're leveling. Either way I hope you enjoyed the video, hopefully that cleared up a little bit about the class changes on Turtle Wow. If you enjoyed the video and somehow made it till the end please let me know in the comments down below. It's been over half an hour now so yeah let me know in the comments down below and if you enjoyed the video please consider dropping a like it really helps me out with the youtube algorithm which is a really difficult boss to defeat these days but hey if you want to help me out and give me a heal or a tank a bit then like that like button either way hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did well once again do that stuff subscribe to the channel for more classic wow and turtle wow content as always thank you all so much for watching i'm gonna go lie down and i'll see you again very soon